Hey guys, this is Dr. Sean again over at Natural Body Works, and we're going to continue on with our costochondritis and rib out of place um, basic series. It's kind of gotten out of hand because a lot of views, which is good. But we need to really understand some other things, some like differential diagnosis, which means what else could it possibly be, and also um, some other terms for it that may not be as appropriate as we would think. So let's get started. So I've drawn here on this dry erase board, they, a little diagram of the rib situation and how it works out. Now this area, if you look up in this corner over here, is basically showing a person here, and it's this section <coughs> kind of opened up here. So we're looking straight at, this is the rib, the lowest part of the rib here, and this, this is cartilage, the blue parts are the cartilage that meets the sternum, that's the breastbone right in front, and the second rib up here with a cutaway view, here we can see the insides of everything, we can see lung, you know, through all of this, we go from the outside in, we have skin over on this side, then the green part, that's the fat, subcutaneous fat, and then we have sets of muscles, we have the external intercostals, the internal intercostals, the intermediate intercostals, and then we've got <coughs> um, this fascia, which is the internal, the inside of the thorax, it's a fascia kind of tissue that holds it all together. Now just attached to that, is what's called the parietal um, pleura, which is the inside sac for the lungs to be. Now, in between that and the next section, which is called the visceral pleura, that's what covers the lungs itself, is this little space, a potential space called the um, uh, pleural space. And inside there is serous fluid. The serous fluid is made by the rubbing action of these tissues, and it's a lubricant, and it helps to stick the lungs to the sides of the chest and all that jazz. So again, here, so here's lung here in the orange, and we have the pink. This is muscle, so we cut away. And this here is a slice away of the bone, the rib bone itself. And we've got some of the marrow up in here, and underneath, which I've talked about before in other videos, is the vein, artery, and nerve complex. So there's always going to be a vein, an artery, and a nerve. And the nerve tells the muscles how to work. Now over on this side as well, right near the chest, right in the front, right to, where it attaches to the uh, the ribs attached to the sternum. We also have a vein artery and nerve at that point too. So those can be irritated. So th that kind of gives us a little bit of a background on what we're going to be looking at here. So <coughs> that's the general anatomy just for reference. Um, so we have rib, rib, up here rib. In the background of it, so if we go deeper to that stuff here, here's this rib pulls all the way back and around and attaches to the vertebra. This would be the vertebral body. This would be the transverse process up here. There would be one on the other side. So remember, we're looking at it at an angle, basically like this. At this angle right here is if we're looking at that part right there. And we have deep inside there, here's the disc for the vertebra, and then the connection where the rib attaches. Now remember, the rib attaches to the vertebral body. Um, to two vertebral bodies, really. And then there's a ligament basics uh, structure in here that holds us all together. Now that it goes back from the neck of the rib which attaches to the um, the con this little condyle here. Now this is all hyaline cartilage, this is all cartilaginous, this is cartilaginous, this is fibrous cartilage, but this is uh, like hyaline cartilage. So this very common type, type of cartilage. Whenever you have costochondritis, costo meaning rib, chondritis, cond meaning cartilage, we could be talking about this section here we could be talking about up and through here, we could be talking about up in here. Now this section up in the back, in the top, really that's the chiropractic subluxation complex. That's really what it is. Once you have a, a one of the bones of the spine, if it moves in any direction, it's going to take a rib with it. The ribs have to move and articulate with those bones. So that's one of the main things that we call costochondritis, but it could be just the simple, like a chiropractic subluxation uh, complex. You know, the complex is going to take, you know, two bones, uh, two vertebral bones plus the, the the rib and a whole bunch of other stuff, and you can get spasming, you can get pain. That's really the most common thing we see. It you be pain on the back. Could be all the way around to the front. That, that deep breath will cause a, um, a like a sharp pain goes all the way to the front. If it's in the front. Uh, it could also be a misalignment of the chest, it could be a misalignment of the sternum, or maybe if the spine has rotated, it's going to take those ribs, if we're looking at it from here, put it up this way, it's going to take those ribs and move them at a, at a kind of a weird angle, and that can cause spasming of muscle. That's really what the pain you're feeling, the spasm of the muscle <clears throat> and the uh, inflammation around that little joint that's been, uh, for lack of a better term, insulted. So there's other terms also that we have 
that relate to this is a Tietze syndrome, which this really isn't that. Tietze syndrome is a, is a little bit more focal. There's swelling at the point, so you're going to have a lot of swelling, not just a, a little bit. It tends to be also related to um, cartilaginous issues, which means what? Other cartilage disease processes or connective, uh, connective tissue disease process. Now, you can get this if you have something like... Um, Oh, fibromyalgia or um, uh, myofascial pain syndrome, ankylosing spondylitis, Reiter's syndrome, Marfan syndrome, uh, Turner syndrome. These are all like genetic, hereditary kind of things. So we have to differential diagnosis. It doesn't really mean any difference in the, the way we treat it with those things, unless you had something like uh, um, osteogenesis imperfecta or something like that, where your bones don't actually form in the way, in the shape that they should. And that's where we get a little bit more complicated. But the uh, most of those are, you're going to know about. It's going to be pretty obvious, or you're going to have other issues compounding those. You're going to see the difference, like Marfan syndrome, for example. Their, their wingspan, is where their arms are out, is further than they are tall. Uh, remember, a lot of these syndromes and problems haven't really been studied very well and some of them weren't even agreed upon. Marfan syndrome wasn't even agreed upon until the 90s and it's just, you know, it was like 20 years ago and before that it was very unusual. Ankylosing spondylitis, for example, which is a HLA B27 is the blood marker, that's a connective tissue disorder that was considered kind of a death sentence early on. Norman Cousins was very uh, uh, useful at bringing that to light because he was diagnosed with it. Now, whether he actually had that or some other compound or something else, we don't know. I mean, we, we go with what we got. Other things that can, can mimic or the differential diagnosis for this rib pain, okay, front or back or all the way around, is going to be anxiety attacks, which you can see the videos we've done on that one before, so we talk about how to do the breathing and stuff for those. Could be, um, uh, worst case scenarios, lymphoma, uh, lung disease, lung cancer, uh, pneumonia, bronchitis, sometimes those can cause those things, or coughing can push that out of place. Um, herpes zoster, which is from like shingles. Now you'll find, what you'll find is somewhere on the skin, like over here or something, you would find blisters or a red rash. But those are going to be pretty indicative. Other things too, always got to think about the ticker, the heart, if it's on the left side especially. If it's on the right side, it could be liver, it could be diaphragm spasm, those kind of things can kind of mimic. But, um, <coughs> what's the other one? Uh, pleurisy. When these two pleural, the, the visceral pleura, remember we talked about that, the little the light green one here that's uh, attached to the lung, and the space between um, get somehow either infected or injured or something. You have pleuritis or pleurisy or um, uh, the chest rub, basically, because that's sticking together. It's quite painful. Um, rheumatism, or rh rheumatic fever, uh, polymyalgia, rheumatica, uh, 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 ehlers danlos syndrome. Um, pericarditis, myocardial infarction, that would be a heart attack on the side. So here's the kind of the key. Depends on your age. It do, so like if you're in heart attack land, uh, that ages and you know you have like certain risk factors, you, you know, you're overweight and your cholesterol's high and all that kind of just stressful environment. Those can be like, well, check heart first. And it's always a good idea anyway. See what the heart's doing, see what the blood pressure's doing, that could be an indicator. You're sweating a lot. Sweating doesn't happen with costochondritis. This is a hot day, but I mean, sweating and, and, and uh, paleness or something like that doesn't happen with costochondritis. The swelling in one spot doesn't happen with costochondritis. Costochondritis is considered diffuse, so it's over in a, a big area. It will hurt if you lean towards it or away from it. It'll hurt if you take a deep breath. It'll be like a sharp pain, like someone stabs you with an ice pick and turns it every time you take a deep breath or cough or sneeze or laugh or anything like that. Those don't happen in all of this other stuff. So. Lung diseases, for example, it'll hurt all the time, or it'll get progressively worse, or hurt at night, or something like that. Now, subluxation and, and this kind of stuff, it can wake you up if you move wrong, it'll pinch you, but generally, we're going to have pain with movement, okay? Things that can help it, too, sometimes, is ice pack on the spot. If you can feel it in one area, you can put a cold pack on there. That can kind of take down the inflammation and give you a little bit of relief. But then you'd use uh, uh, some warm packs or hot packs, hot bath, hot Epsom salt bath, nice hot shower, massage work, stuff like that. will help open up those muscles and let them flush through the lactic acid and, and not be as spasm. Now, we did a whole video on that, too. You can check out the pain spasm 
uh, cycle uh, as well. So um, just wanted to give you guys some, some other information. There's so many things that this could be. So we want to start ruling things out. And when you're going with what's called differential diagnosis, we want to go with the worst case scenario possible. And that's always like the scariest is like the cancer or something or um, a heart attack. Those are the worst things you can, of course, right? You, you, you could die from those. And then it goes <clears throat> from there. And once, if you can't get rid of this with pretty conventional, easy means, I mean, use the, the tennis ball trick, use the hot, you know, the cold, the, whatever, the medicated patches and those things. If that's not helping you, then you have to go to the next step, and that could be a blood test. And the blood tests are not the regular blood tests. You might have like what's called a sedimentation rate is a little higher, which shows an inflammation process, is called ESR. And um, uh, you can do those, and then you can do some other specific testing, HLA B8, HLA B27, RA, ANA, and all of these other things. So those are a little bit more specific. Uh, they're a little bit more costly, so we try to, you know, or at least I try with my patients and you guys, whatever it is, to try to do something that can help you get past this without um, spending a lot of money, you know, because you could spend, if this is a, if you have a costochondritis issue and it's getting you on the left side, you may end up in the hospital for three days. And they're doing blood tests and they're doing MRIs and CT scans and x-rays and they're putting you on the treadmill and they're doing all this kind of stuff and then they go like, hmm, everything looks good. Here's your bill for, you know, $30,000 or whatever it happens to be. And that's kind of a ridiculous way to think about it but you know I mean it's good if you if you have the means and you have the insurance or where you're working you live in a place where that's already provided for you that's fine but <clears throat> an overworked medical system we have to have other options so start with easy and work up from there of course if this keeps getting worse you should you know talk to somebody you know we've had people on the videos from here uh, contact me from as far away as New York City and Rhode Island and Texas and Washington and the Washington State and Washington DC we've had people from uh, California as well as um, other countries India and Canada and so um, they're asking if they can come see me sure you can come see me I'm in Colorado so it's a little bit uh, it's kind of a long drive but I think you can always find somebody as long as they understand it and you have the right questions and you have a little bit of understanding what's going on you can give them enough information they can help you out a lot physiotherapists chiropractors for sure sometimes physical therapists physical therapists physiotherapists a little different um, occasionally an osteopath may be able to do it and sometimes even a, a massage therapist can get in there and, and work those muscles and loosen this up for you so that's it that's our third I think third part on on costochondritis and TT syndrome and elder denulose and all that kind of stuff don't worry about those don't worry about labeling it it's a rib out of place man it can go back it pops right back in just like it popped out generally if it pops out it's because you were in a position for a long time and then tried to stand up fast or you moved I did it to myself a few months ago uh, checking the, uh, the thing for the shower I was moving the shower head and my rib went out and it was so painful and luckily I knew what it was but I had to work myself up to fixing it anyway so everybody anybody can can suffer from these things also I've been already been diagnosed with the HLA B27 so ankylosing spondylitis ankylosing spondylitis is one of the things that I have to think about it's not a big deal for me because I keep control of it it's a connective tissue disorder but you know hey you got to adapt adapt and live so anyway this is Dr. Sean over at Natural Body Works here in Parker Colorado uh, give us a like give us a uh, um, thanks so much for the comments guys I really appreciate that it's really neat to see those and I do answer them as soon as I can sometimes it takes a little while for me to see and we're like over 550 subscribers that's very exciting so tell your friends and, and if you have questions let me know because I'll this is what this is about someone from Rhode Island actually asked about this so I would make them a, a, their own special video so there you are um, anyway, Dr. Sean over at Natural Body Works Park, Colorado. You can give us a call. I'll leave the number at the bottom here. Or maybe we'll have it scroll across or something like that. And then the, the ending credits will have the address and the website, which is thenaturalbodyworks.com. So, anyway, thank you so much. If you have anything, uh, have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.